In today's show, we're looking ahead to Tuesday in the NBA. Some interesting stream options opening up. Michael Bolton, you streamable? Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. We're looking ahead to Tuesday. It's going to be a playoff day for most of you if you're in Roto. We're towards the end of the year. We're four weeks to go to the end of the season. What you do is super important at this point of the year. So we're going to tell you what we're looking for, some updates on injuries, and some streaming options. Warney, what do you think? Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> First game, big news. Big news. Because the Grizzlies are taking on the paces, and the Grizzlies are likely going to do it without Ja Morant. Morant is doubtful with back soreness. And when players are doubtful, they just don't play. It's basically an out designation. Maybe he plays, but he probably doesn't. 10% chance that he plays, probably less. So, we get a big opportunity for Tyus Jones to step in as the starting point guard. Some real value there. I said I wanted to focus on Dylan Brooks here on the graphic you can see, and I still do, to see how the Brooks... Morant, Bain combination worked. Of course, out of that trio, the least efficient player, Dylan Brooks, led the team in usage last game. But now, without Morant there, Brooks is going to have a field day to take as many shots as he wants. It's going to help his fantasy value, of course. We still don't get that answer to how does the pecking order go, Brooks, Morant, Bain. But that's fine. Tyus Jones, we're really loving what he's going to do. We want to see Brooks again ramp it up. And also want to see Brandon Clark, who's been wildly all over the map. He'll put up top 90 numbers for a couple of weeks. He'll put up top 300 numbers for a couple of weeks. The minutes are never going to push to 28 a night, it feels like. He still can be useful. He's a great option for a day like today, or a day like Tuesday, but just never getting consistently good enough to be, yes, I must hold under all circumstances. For the paces, Isaiah Jackson, we saw him stay out of foul trouble last game. I believe that he is a clear must-roster player, and he's someone we should be looking at. Now, they've still got some injury woes. Goga's questionable, Lance Stevenson's questionable, while Brogdon and Duarte, who both missed last game, Brogdon's missed the last two with a concussion, I know. You could knock me over with a feather when I heard that, that he heard it that he was out. Um, they're both questionable too. So there's lots of opportunities potentially opening up. Does du- What does Duarte do if he plays and if Brogdon plays or if Brogdon doesn't play? Who steps up otherwise if both are out? Is it Dwayne Washington again? Do we get Kiefer Sykes? Probably not. Probably Dwayne. Yeah, Jalen Smith, who's been really strong. This team has a lot of possibilities, and there's four blokes who might all be out, meaning that Brissett and Jackson and Smith and Washington and even the Red Rooster Terry Taylor come into play as streaming options on this low-volume four-game day. We want to watch the Nets and the Magic. That's the second game of the day. Brooklyn, of course, has just been fined for letting Kyrie Irving in their locker room, $50,000 doesn't appear like that um, rule is getting rescinded anytime soon at this point. Kyrie will play in this game, though. Um, it is in Orlando, and then he will probably have to sit if the rules stick the next three after that. That's two more this week and one next week. So Kyrie's back. So what does that mean for Goran Dragic, who started last game and played 38 without Kyrie? It's a lot of minutes for Goran Dragic, man. It is a lot of minutes. So where does Dragic fit here? He has been a pretty solid assists streamer. He's not a must roster under any circumstance, especially when Kyrie plays. But I want to see what his role is. While we do not have... um, That's not true. I said we do not have... We don't have... No, we don't know whether Seth Curry is going to play. He's questionable. But we do know that LaMarcus Aldridge is out. So the big avocado, Andre Drummond, is going to get more minutes again. It's going to be him and Nicky Claxton splitting that center playing time. And Drummond is a 12-team league guy as long as Aldridge is out. Aldridge is going to miss, it looks like, at least the next two games, maybe the rest of this week with... uh, Yeah arthritis in his hip. Of course, I make a joke, but he's got the hip issue and it probably is arthritic at this stage. On to the Orlando Magic, who have one of the best schedules this week. We've talked about that in the week preview earlier this week. 
So we want to see what Chumura Kiki can do. Now, it's been disappointing to see him play 15 and 19 minutes the last two games. Really disappointing to see that. What does he do? Does we see Mo Bamba play 30 minutes again? Which, again, I've been impressed with the way the Magic have handled rotations this season. I don't think this is it, though. Yeah, Chum is going to be around on this team. I don't think Mo Bamba is. So going with two centers in Carter and Bamba with limiting Chuma is not, not the greatest common sense move. So we'll see what Mosley does. Can Chuma play 25 again or is he going to stick, stick at 20? Because if he sticks at 20, outside of streaming, there's no value. And we'll watch Markel Fultz, who honestly, against the Sixers, was the Magic's best player. And you could argue he was the best player on the court in the minutes he was there. He was awesome. His passing was great. He looked really solid. Now, I'm not really convinced that he's going to be a 15 assists per 100 possessions guy, which is what he's been this season, or that he's going to be a 50-plus percent shooter, which is what he's been this season. But he's been impressive. So let's see. Can his minutes ramp up at all? I don't think they will. But we want to see just how good he can continue to be because he has looked very, very strong um, in the games that he has played this season. We'll get back and talk about the other two games on Tuesday in a sec. But now I've got to tell you about Bet Online because college basketball, the tournament... Is here. Is State U going to beat Tech? Are the Wildcats going to take down the Tigers? I don't know. But you can find all of the latest odds, contests, and player props at betonline.net, your number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info. It is the best spot for all sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sport, wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino game. So head to that website today, betonline.net, and your, or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet online is where the game starts. The next game we will look at is the Pistons and the Heat. The depressed penis Sadiq Bay. He featured on my buy low, sell high, or over underperforming show earlier today because some of his numbers are a little bit down. His free throws are off. He's obviously not hitting his shots. His usage is down. Will his usage continue to remain down? I think that's possible for Sadiq with Cade and Jeremy Grant doing the most and Sadiq doing the least. But can he get a little bit of a bounce back? And I also want to watch Isaiah Livers. We're expecting that Alf Stewart doesn't play in this game. I also ex oh, Actually, holy shit, no. Let me refresh. Alf Stewart is off the injury report. That is just as I'm recording this breaking now. So I don't know what the hell that means in terms of what he is going to do in terms of minutes. He's, got, he's only missed three games with that knee injury. That is surprising. Um, so Alf Stewart's off the injury report, breaking news, which won't be breaking by the time you listen to this, but it is breaking literally right now. Um, let me just refresh my thoughts. So does that mean that Livers stays in the rotation? Because he's been playing good minutes. He closed the game last time out, played 27. But will he get minutes over Kali Linick? Will he stay in the rotation with Stewart and Bagley there? Will it be Stewart, Bagley, Olenek, Grant, Livers? Someone's going to miss out. Is it going to be Livers? Is it going to be Olenek? Very interesting stuff. The fact that Stewart's back might make Bagley a drop if it wasn't for the fact that the Pistons have the three quality games coming up. So you want to hold Bagley there, but the 30 minutes a night he's been getting, he's probably going to drop back to at least you know, 25, maybe 26. Interesting development. Did not expect Elf Stewart back in this game. Um, Paul Miami. Tyler Hero also featured on the Buy Low, Sell High show earlier today. He's been shooting really, really well. Jimmy Butler's big toe slash nasal congestion is off the injury report, so he'll play. Hero's getting great usage, big minutes, and shooting the lights out. I'm not convinced that this continues for Hero, but we want to see where he sits and what his role looks like. Caleb Martin is out, so that should en enable Max Struess to get some rotation minutes. Well, Victor Oladipo returns from his rest last game. Now, Oladipo is going to hover around that 18, 19 minute mark and not be a 12 team league player. But we also just want to see what he looks like on the court because it's great that he's back. And can he start to show that he deserves more minutes over some of these other guys that have been very important for the Heat this season? The last game of the day we want to look at is, we're going to do streams in a second, don't worry. Well, um, we're looking at the Phoenix Suns taking on the New Orleans Pelicans. Of course, Chris Paul remains out. Gabriel Lundberg is a player that plays for Phoenix. He might not be here for two weeks, though, as he waits to get visa clearance from Denmark, just, just in case you're um, big on the Lundberg 50-team um, league situation. But Cam Johnson's also out in this game for Phoenix. So... Aaron Holiday really stepped it up against the Lakers. Now, that's because they kicked their ass and Holiday played a lot of garbage time. But is there any utility in him? Probably not. But given, again, the limited number of games that are on, a guy that's probably going to play 18 minutes, maybe more, maybe there's something there. And with Cam Johnson out again, that still helps Jay Crowder, who's been very good most of the time. And he's going to produce, I would expect, 
some pretty strong value. For the Pelicans, there's no Brandon Ingram, but we might have Christian James McCollum back. He's questionable for health with out of health and safety protocols. He's only missed the two games. So if CJ does play, what do they do with the lineup? Do they put Devontae Graham back on the bench? Do they start CJ and Devontae with um, uh, Herb Jones at the three and Najee Marshall coming off the bench? We know that there's been defensive issues with CJ and Graham playing together. So I think they might start Herb and Najee at the two and the three, CJ at the one and Graham back on the bench. I wouldn't drop Devontae Graham, but obviously if CJ does return, it hurts him and it hurts Jose Alvarado who had 10 assists and six steals last game. Still some stream value for Jose, but not as much. Jackson Hayes has also popped off the last two games without CJ and without Ingram. CJ returning, if that does in fact happen, will impact Hayes. We still want to hold him, especially for this game, but just be understanding that his minutes and his production probably does drop off this game, Hayes, if CJ plays. So it is a big hit probably coming for Graham, for Hayes, for Marshall, and for Alvarado. Some guys that are going to take some hits if CJ does in fact come back and play. We're going to be back in a sec to talk about streaming options, but I'm going to tell you now about Rock Auto. You know, it's a miserable experience buying parts for your car. If I knew anything about cars, I'd be able to tell you how miserable that experience was. But I can just imagine, I don't want to go to shops for anything, let alone wait in line to talk to a bloke behind the counter who's just going to rip you off and going to just just, just deliver you the parts, just his warehouse keeps and charge you more money for it. I could go straight to rockauto.com, an online family business who have been serving auto parts customers for 20 plus years. Why would you spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts for your car, whether that part is a brake lamp, whether it's a, t- uh, a brake part, sorry, a tail lamp, a mo- motor oil, or even a new carpet. You can see I'm a big car person, love cars, brum, brum. So whatever that part is, you know that Rock Auto is going to have that part available for you and it's going to be there at a reliably low price. So head to rockauto.com and in the how did you hear about us box, right? Locked on so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Let's look at some streaming options. And I was, and I have been doing this through the year, is in giving you the back-to-back streams. And I thought, you know what? Sorry, kids, cover your ears. Just blank them out for this bit. But with 12 games on Wednesday, fuck that. I'm not doing a back-to-back stream for a 12-game Wednesday. It's fucking stupid. So let's do the, when, the Tuesday, Thursday, back-to-back. It's not really a back-to-back, but this is how we should be planning our week. So, of course, the only teams that have that combination are the Pistons and the Magic. So, a great stream is Corey Joseph, Kali Olenek, although he might be out of the rotation. Isaiah Livers, although he might be out of the rotation, depending on what happens with Stewart. Markel Fultz, Flaming Mo Wagner, RJ Hampton. I'd be less interested in Terrence Ross and Gary Harris, because what they have been doing is they have been um, alternating games played, basically. So Ross will play one, then Harris will play the other one. And that obviously has, you know, very little um, reliability for fantasy, if that's what they're going to do. So just be aware of that. Um, but there is value in a lot of these magic guys. Stream them in. If, if Truman's available, you grab him. Mo Wagner's there. Uh, RJ Hampton, all those Pistons players. Corey Joseph, Killian Hayes, if he returns, some stream value there. We're going to look at streamers just for Tuesday. We're looking at Ty Stones as a great option with a jar out. Nick Claxton, Dunkey Robinson, Corey Joseph, Jose Alvarado, although that's muted somewhat if CJ plays. Kelly Olenek literally might not play, so be careful there. PJ Tucker, Kyle Anderson, Najee Marshall, JaVale McGee. Deeper formats, we're looking at Max Struess with Caleb Martin out, Dwayne Dedman, RJ Hampton, Isaiah Livers might not play. Zaire Williams, Billy Hernan Gomez, Aaron Holiday, Terrence Ross, Tory Craig, and James Johnson. And for points leagues, we've got Isaiah Jackson, Tyus Jones, Jalen Smith, Brandon Clark, DeAnthony Melton, Herbalife Jones, Trun Rikiki, Najee Marshall, O'Shea Brissett, and Nicholas Claxton. And that will do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey. And if you're on YouTube, what are you doing? Thumb it up. You know what to do. Subscribe, notification bell. Drop comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.
Brum, brum.